Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to this latest video weather briefing from the National Weather Service. We're going to talk about yet another heat wave and very dry air along with weak offshore flow. And we know what that means, that presents challenges with fire weather conditions across California. This is Alex Tardy, Meteorologist, National Weather Service. The date is September 24th, 2020. High temperatures, what are the hottest days? But well, we think probably Tuesday and Wednesday will be the hottest days to round off the end of September. Temperatures inland valley areas should be over 100, in some cases close to 105, and up around 110 for the deserts. Even some hot temperatures making it all the way to the coast, such as Anaheim, getting close to 100. Humidity will really tank on Monday and really stay low through all next week, except for the immediate coast. We're going to see humidity each day getting down into the upper single digits and the lower teens across our inland areas and even our inland valleys getting into the teens. So critically dry conditions. Why so hot and dry? Well, upper level high pressure is with us today as I do this recording. OK, but a storm system is going to go back to the north across British Columbia, and that's going to bring some cool air across the Pacific Northwest. But quickly, this upper level high pressure, key is upper level high pressure, builds right over central California starting on Sunday. That we're going to see this surface high pressure, the cooler air, bring a little bit of offshore flow to northern California, and that's going to spread into southern California on Sunday, Monday. So we're going to see this high pressure at the surface setting up for Sunday, Monday for offshore flow. Okay, once this surface high pressure starts to weaken, and it's not a strong one, it'll weaken on Monday and we'll still have that offshore flow continuing from the northeast Monday morning. But a dome of high pressure, again, upper level dome of high pressure builds right over central California as shown here, and rather strong. And this will lead to our hot temperatures Monday through Wednesday. The dome of hot air doesn't go anywhere. It looks like it'll settle over Southern California on Wednesday and then shift ever so slightly to the east on Thursday. And so the heat wave starts to weaken on Thursday, Friday from west to east. Here's a look at the trend we expect the hottest part of the air mass to build across the desert areas on Monday, Tuesday, and probably peak out on Wednesday. Along the coast, here's a point at San Diego showing the same type of trend, though it does flatten by Wednesday. You can see Monday and Tuesday quite a jump in how hot the air mass is and how much air will be pressing down and squashing that marine layer, making it go away or be much less effective. It does look like extreme potential for temperature along the southwest part of California, our region here in Southern California. But also it looks like the epicenter of this heat and how unusual it is, is across central and Northern California as shown in the deep red. We are dealing with very dry conditions across the Southwest and not just because we had summer or it's fall, but conditions are below record levels as shown here. These are the fuel moisture readings out of the southern mountains in California. Critically dry conditions. The live fuel moisture, which is a measure of the vegetation that was actually still alive, is also at critical low levels. Why has it been so hot and dry? Well, we've seen numerous heat waves. We're now on heat wave number 13, and they've really been centered on the inland areas. And you can see the gradient of red on the left-hand image. The coast has been hot, but just a couple of degrees above normal. You go into the valleys, over the past 60 days, it's been three to four degrees combined above average. You go over to the desert areas, it's the top of the chart. It's five degrees above average. Hottest temperatures we've ever seen for our desert areas over the past 60 days. When you look at the past 90 days, the same scenario plays out where you could see the coast Hasn't been as severe, even though it's been above average. Inland areas are mountains and deserts much above average over the past 90 days. Do we have any chance of precipitation? Well, I wouldn't say it's zero, um, but I wouldn't hold your breath either. There is a slight chance of a little pattern change by mid-October, but it does look weak at this time. 
And whether or not the moisture interacts with this weak weather disturbance coming off the Pacific is really uncertain right now. Too far out. The official outlook calls for this, uh, basically average or normal conditions. And normally late September and early October is quite dry in California. So this is all relative. Normally we don't see precipitation until maybe mid to late October. All right. Uh, temperatures, the outlook for temperatures is on the beaches in the 80s, coastal cities, upper 80s to topping out to 100, like near Anaheim or maybe El Cajon. Inland valleys, 95 to 104. Inland Empire of Riverside, San Bernardino, 101 to 108. Hottest locations like San Bernardino and Chino. High deserts getting up right around 100 at Victorville each day. Lower deserts, it's going to be a scorcher especially for this time of year. Temperatures every day around 110, much above average. The foothill locations should be up near 100 as well, at least the upper 90s. And mountains, mid 80s to mid 90s. You can also check out information on our webpage that shows the records, but the records are running much above average as shown here. We're talking about temperatures 10 to 18 degrees above their normal averages for late September. Tips to beat the heat. You just gotta limit outdoor activity and prepare in advance. For most situations, you'll be okay. If you can avoid the peak heat of the day, dress appropriately, have plenty of fluid. And if you're gonna work outdoors or have to work outdoors, or you're gonna do something uh, leisurely or something even strenuous like exercise, you need to prepare for that. Avoid that peak of the day and try to go out early morning or in the evening. The summary is shown here, a long duration heat wave, yet another one uh, for late September. It looks like the peak will be Tuesday, Wednesday. Hot temperatures and low humidity away from the immediate coast. So just inland will be the focus in our inland valleys, our mountains and deserts. Weak offshore flow that's coming from the Northeast is expected on Sunday, Monday. At the wind prone areas, strongest in the passes of 25, 35 miles per hour. We probably will see some record highs, at least daily record highs. It's not as intense as our early September Labor Day heat wave. Slow lowering of temperatures late next week. Coastal temperatures for the most part, 85 to 95. That's still hot uh, for coastal cities. We probably could see some patchy fog too, especially maybe on Monday when the heat wave really kicks in. Is there any chance of rain in October? Well, barring any tropical moisture coming up from the south, that's typically what gives us rain in October, like we saw in 2018. We don't see that right now, um, but it's not zero chance. Tune back in, we'll see as we get into October if there really is a real chance for any precipitation in mid-October. Make sure you check weather.gov for the latest watches, advisories, and even a potential warning for temperatures would be posted immediately on weather.gov when they are issued. We also post that information on Facebook and Twitter. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.